Good morning everyone. Welcome to St Mark's A-Side. This is our service for the 23rd of August 2020, the 11th Sunday after Trinity. Our Eucharist service today is being led by Reverend Doug Oates. The service is not being broadcast live so you can watch it at any time of day. All the services we have broadcast remain available via the calendar on our website at stmarkshayside.org.uk. There is an order of service which was sent out with our weekly news sheet email, but if you want a copy of that, just contact me on John Corbishley at btinternet.com. In addition to our online services, our church is now open again on Sunday mornings for a Eucharistic worship service. At present, there is no singing and everyone must wear face coverings. You need to book in in advance in order to attend with Dave Brooks. Next Sunday will be the final online video services service for some time, but we look forward to seeing you in church when you feel able to do so. But for now, please join in with this service and the hymns, and we hope that you find our services both useful and supportive. We start this morning's service by singing, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion for today, the 11th Sunday in Trinity. Welcome to all of you who are joining us here on, um, on online and those of you who've got the DVDs. And we, are, we will this morning be joined by all those of our fellowship who will be in church for this service. Welcome. The Lord be with you. So we come to our opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. 
So in a moment or two of silence, let's bring before God those things for which we want to ask his forgiveness. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect set for this week. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who reign, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. We pause now for our readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule like peoples. The coastlands wait for me and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath it. For the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. This is the word of the Lord. The response to today's psalm is, O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. 
I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. O Lord, your love endures for ever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. O Lord, your love endures for ever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures for ever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. O Lord, your love endures for ever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, alleluia. We not, do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist. So they say, uh, others say that you are, sorry, they reply, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of death will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. O Christ. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked. What's in a name? In Shakespeare's Juliet, apparently that phrase pops up. What is in a name? There's a sense that we have to own a name, more than just a collection of letters that identify us. So, what's in your name? What does your name mean? Mine, apparently, is Gaelic for black and shiny. The shiny bit I can understand, but I'm not sure about the rest. The Jews were very particular about names and about what they meant. Isaac means laughs. Esau means hairy, Jacob means he deceives. A number of months ago in our morning prayers and Bible study, Christine and I were looking at the book of Daniel. As you probably know, Daniel and three of his friends, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, were captured by the Babylonians and they were uh, signaled out for special training to become courtiers to King Nebuchadnezzar. It was a bit of brainwashing, really. And I can already see the confusion, or at least sense the confusion, when I mentioned Daniel's friends, because they didn't seem to be the names that we know them by. Well, part of the training was that their names had to be changed from Hebrew names to Babylonian names, which were honoring to the Babylonian gods. Daniel in Hebrew means God is my judge. And it was changed to Belshazzar in honor of the bell of bell the uh, god of nebuchadnezzar which means prince of bell hananiah uh, in hebrew meant jehovah favors his name was changed to shadrach inspired by the babylonian sun god and michelle in hebrew means who is like god it becomes meshach which means who is like shak a babylonian idol hence the names that we remember them by, and that is, a bit, sorry, and that is um, those three names, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In this country, what we call surnames arose largely from what people did, Smith, Baker, Butcher, etc. It's interesting that this discussion in the Gospel reading today should take place at Caesarea Philippi. Philippi was the home of many, many cults, and the uncommitted or fringe believer could be easily confused by what they saw and experienced there. The attraction of cults should not be underestimated either then or now. Caesarea Philippi was the centre of two cults that have contemporary equivalents. The cult of Pan, which was basically nature worship, which emerges today in New Age and pagan practices, 
and in goods that are sold to help people in that way. Uh, calling the crystals and pyramids helpful to understand Mother Earth. Literally, the worship of nature itself. Don't get me wrong. Christians are to respect the Earth, but not to worship it. Christians do not worship creation, but the Creator. Secondly, there was emperor worship. The cult of emperor worship was a, a mix of nationalism, militant dictatorship and hero worship. Today, in politics, entertainment and sport, one person can control others' lives, sometimes unknowingly. The parallel in hero worship will be people like Jessica Ennis and Mo Farah and other quite superb sports personalities, I suppose, from the Olympics or the Paralympics or from other realms of sport. And I don't deny these athletes their moments of glory, but there's a fine line between honouring them and almost worshipping them. A few years ago, Beckham, Owen and Gerard appeared in Asian countries on giant billboards. And when Beckham went to China, he was mobbed. Not his fault. It's how we have elevated some of our sports people. But apparently, David Beckham was listed in 2002 in the top 10 of Britain's greatest of all time. I think the survey must have been done whilst he was still at United at the Stratford End one rainy Saturday afternoon just after he scored a vital free kick. But there you go. Many pop idols cultivate hero worship. Think of the pop idol series a few years ago. Today, there are people like Madonna and Robin Williams, Take That, Ed Sheeran and so on. And apparently the cheapest ticket to see the last Madonna uh, concert in this country cost over a hundred pounds. And then there were the Beatles in their time. Perhaps more sinister are the dictators of this world who set themselves as living deities to be worshipped and obeyed to the point of lunacy. In the past, we've had people like Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin and so on. And more recently, we had Saddam Hussein, and dare I say it, Osama bin Laden and Mugabe. And today, of course, we have Putin, and even more scary, Sun Hill. These people head up supposed governments that destroy people's lives and freedoms. And as we look at the sinful world around us, it raises the question, who is the Lord of our lives? Jesus said to the disciples, Who do you say that I am? It appears that there was some confusion about who Jesus was. Who do people say that I am? Jesus said. It had some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah. But Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? By then, there was a fair amount of evidence around that he was someone special if people are bothered to read the signs, that is. But even signs can be confusing. A traffic policeman pulled over a car chugging along a busy motorway at 22 miles per hour. Approaching the car, he discovered it had five elderly women inside. He noticed that while the driver was calm and that the rest of the passengers in the car were white as a sheet. Before the other uh, before the officer could speak, the driver said to him, Officer, I don't understand why you pulled me over. I was driving the exact speed for this road. He answered, I didn't stop you for speeding, but because you were driving too slow. Slow driving, of course, on a motorway can be as dangerous as speeding. She looked at him in defiance and said, I just saw the signs all along the side of the road that said the speed limit is 22. Chuckling, the policeman said that 22 was not the speed limit, but the number of the motorway upon which she was driving, the M22. A bit defiant, the woman thanked the peace officer for pointing out her error. However, before he let her go, he asked, Madam, I couldn't help but wonder if the rest of your passengers are okay. They look rather shaken to me. The driver said, 
oh, they'll be fine in a few minutes. We just turned off the M150. Well, those of you who drive, of course, will realize that as far as I know, those are not two motorways. But the story is interesting in terms of reading signs. It would appear in our gospel, reading that Jesus' disciples were, re, re, sorry, reading that Jesus' disciples were reading the signs, but getting the wrong message. All except Peter, that is. Note that in today's gospel, Peter was the first apostle to confess that Jesus was the expected Messiah. Jesus' name, thus the Messiah, sums up a vital truth about him. It meant that the Saviour had come. And in Acts 4 and verse 12, we read of the early Christians confessing Jesus as Lord and Saviour. They named the name. We become Christians when we become followers of Jesus, when we name him as at our heart, in our hearts, as Saviour and Lord. This is our calling and mission. Who is Jesus? Who do we say Jesus is? After all, some of his claims seem preposterous. When we look at the claims that Jesus made for himself, we have to ask if he was mad, bad, or indeed the Messiah Christ, long expected by the Jews. C.S. Lewis wrote in Mere Christianity, a man who was merely a man and said the sort of thing Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. If he was not the son of God, he would either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says he's a pope's dead, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. Let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He never intended to. Clearly, those early disciples made up their mind. They didn't believe him to be a fraud or a madman. It took time, starting with Peter, but it eventually dawned on them all. Jesus was Lord, Messiah, the Christ. And for us and billions of Christians throughout history, the signs have been there. When we confess Jesus as Lord in our hearts, we are truly on the path of discipleship. Jesus was the Christ. It took time for Peter to read the signs, and when he did, he became an important part of God's ministry. Jesus said to Peter, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Petros, or sorry, Peter means Petros or rock. Peter was to be a special part of God's work. And so it is with all those who confess Jesus as Lord. In our reading, Peter expresses the spiritual insight he receives from God, to which Jesus responds, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. A ray of light from God hit Peter's heart and mind about who Jesus is and why he is calling together his messianic community. And Jesus is still calling those who are prepared to listen. And for those who do, the promise of Jesus is clear. If it applied to the disciples then and the disciples now, to them will be given the keys of the kingdom. But there are conditions. It's only by accepting the conditions of the gospel that we receive all the benefits of the kingdom. Jesus said to Peter, who do you say that I am? And because of Peter's confession of Jesus as Lord, he was given the commission to build up the spiritual house of Christ. The same commission is given to each one of us when we confess that Jesus is Lord, when we name him as the Saviour. So today, Jesus asks us that same question. Who do you say that I am? In the creed, we say that we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. And in the baptism liturgy, and also in the brigade prayers, interestingly, we say that we will never be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. So when someone at school or work asks how you spent your weekend, 
Be prepared to own your faith and to name Jesus as Lord. Live up to the name Christian. Do not be ashamed to confess him as Lord. Name the name. Short prayer. Heavenly Father, write on your on our hearts today the prayer we say in the baptism liturgy. Help us to truly confess Jesus as Lord, never being embarrassed or ashamed to name the name above all names, that is, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us proclaim our belief in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we pause for a moment's silence as we enter into prayer, as we are led in our intercessions. Let us pray for the church and the world and give thanks for his goodness. We pray for all who were affected by COVID-19 through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. We pray for those in our community who will, who will feel vulnerable and scared. We pray that the God of love might be their peace and that even in the darkest times, God's love brings hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you, Lord, that here at St. Mark Hayside, the church is open with strict social distancing and all care given. We give thanks to the church wardens and the working party who have worked so hard. The online service is still going on for the time being. We pray for the medical staff of the front line of care, the nurses who struggles. We pray that they will be sustained physically, emotionally and spiritually in the coming weeks. We pray for the world leaders and leaders in our country that they will seek the wisdom of God as they make decisions over the coming days. Father, we bring before you those leading the scientific response to COVID-19 across the world and for the scientists as they look for ways to alleviate symptoms and seek a vaccine for the future. We bring before you a town of Oldham as the infection arises and talk of probably lockdown. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the unemployed. Some of these now are sleeping on the streets. We pray for those suffering mental illness in a such a time as this. Comfort and heal those who are sick in body, mind and spirit, remembering those on our prayer list, Anne and Ron, Lucy, Naomi, Angela, and all who are known to us. We pray for those who have died and are changed from mortality to immortality, and those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Give them the joy in your heavenly kingdom. 
we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we come to our peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we share the peace with each other, either virtually or with those around us, remembering that God's peace comes to us wherever we are and whatever we're doing, but especially as we come to him in worship. So we come to our Eucharistic prayer. Blessed be God who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praises. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord of God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine are poured, it may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Mark's and Dan and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one rare true sacrifice which takes away the th which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace by our communion. Keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your heart and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, your loved ones, and all those for whom you care and pray, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you once more for joining us here virtually or on uh, CDs or wherever. Keep safe, keep well, look after yourselves and look after the others for whom you uh, pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.